Hello YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how I make my embellishments for my walking sticks. Right here you see a handful of crystals, round jewels, round spheres of all shapes and colors. And uh, I have some that size, even bigger than this, and have egg-shaped. And the egg shape, you can do all sorts of things with them. You can mold figurines in them. I'll make the figures inside here with a 3D printer, but you can, anything can be purchased and uh, put inside there, coins and different things. You can also, if you're going to mount them on the end of a walking stick, you can embed a quarter inch dowel, three inch dowel, whatever you want. Embed that in the mold there, let it stick out, and that mold's in there, save you having to drill a hole. Now, it's best if you're going to have a, a darker colored one to do that with, so the dowel don't show up on the inside. Now, you might want a crystal clear one like this, and it's tainted with a little blue cast, so you could round, uh, round the end of that dowel pin and uh, paint it a light blue, and it wouldn't, you know, sort of match the color of your sphere, and uh, it wouldn't show up too bad. <clears throat> now, what I do is use molds like this. This will be for an egg. This will be for one, a crystal, looks similar to this when it comes out. So I'm going to show you how I mix and how I prepare these. And then we'll take them out of the mold and look at them. So that'll be the video for today. You want to stay tuned and watch every bit of it. First thing is showing here, of course, you need your molds. Today, I'm going to be pouring these. I won't be pouring this big one. So I'll just set him aside. But I'll be pouring these. And uh, let's see, I think that's it. Pouring these uh, five different molds here. Now, one of them is going to be a crystal. One of them is going to be an egg. One of them is going to be a sphere. And uh, that may be about that size. And uh, one of them is something new. These are small skulls. And that's what the mold looks like. And I'll have a link below for all this stuff. Now, of course, you need your resin mix here. It's 50-50 mix of what I use. You're going to need some solo cups, and you're going to need some water. And the water will keep you from guessing how much um, resin that you have to have. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to fill this first one up with water. Okay, fill the second one up with water. And third one, and the fourth one. If you're like me, you're going to spill some water. Won't hurt a thing. If you don't have anything you care to get wet. Now, I have five moles full of water. Take my solo cup, and I'm going to pour that water out of each one of them. Shake it out good. End of that solo cup. There's two of them. There goes the egg. Now, if you had 10 of them, you could do the same thing. Put it in a container and see how much water you get. Now, right here. Okay, we're going to pour that in there. Now, now, I'm going to get a magic marker. And I'm going to go inside there and mark where that water line comes to. And then I'm going to see that's three rings down, so I'm going to go over here and go uh, right about there is where that's going to be. That'll be for measuring purposes on the outside. Now put the lid back on your marker and you're done. Now what we want to do is just go out and empty this because we know that much epoxy in that cup will fill all of our molds. So I want to put at least that much in there, maybe a little more for good measure. 
So let's go empty that water. We emptied our water and I transferred the marks to the inside of these cups. Now what I want to do is get my epoxy over here. When I purchased my epoxy, let me show you something here. This is part A. Put a big A on the bottle. Put an A on top of the cap because you don't want to get these caps mixed. If you do, you'll glue the top of A to top of B and then you'll have a hard time getting into it. So I'll mark A there. If it has a little plug inside, Matter of fact, I've considered leaving them out, but there's one of them, and you'll see I have a little red dot in them. That's so I don't get them mixed up. So let's set all these aside, and then we'll be ready to pour. Okay, now I'm just going to pour my A up to that line. And I always pour it just above that line. Now we're ready to put our lid back on A. Black to black. I take the other cup and I pour it with B up to that same point. Right there. Right there we go. A little bit more on that one. But remember, I'm just sitting over here looking at these two marks and I can tell they're just about the same. Now, I'm going to pour this, the, the A, into the B, because the A runs a lot smoother, I think, whichever one's the smoothest running. Let it drain out real well. Give you a little clue here. You, you might leave some inside here, so the one that you're going to use to pour out of needs to have just a tiny bit uh, more resin into it than what you have in this cup because this cup's gonna get slided by however much is not poured out of this stick. So what you can do, and it's what I do, is, is rake, rake that down and get as much of it out as possible. There's, there's more than you think in there that, uh, that'll hold, go ahead and run down that cup now, but uh, what your concern is, is what is still remaining in this cup. So I want to get all that out that I can, which is by this method here. Now, your job is to stir this for three, four minutes. Everybody recommends four minutes, but I think they want to be on the safe side uh, if you have a timer, now's the time to use it. So I'll be back when we get this stirred up about four minutes. And uh, don't have to stir vigorously, just stir it up. After mixing well for about four minutes, I've let it set 15 minutes, and it's starting to warm up. Now it'll get from warm to hot, but you want to let it warm and don't warm quickly at all. Now, you can just simply squeeze this cup a little bit, start pouring into your molds. Now, I'm going to put the bigger molds in the back because they're easier to hit. And uh, let's, let's go with this arrangement right here. Now, I'm going to pour this gently into this mold. These are going to be crystal clear. That's up just completely to the top of that mold. Now let's get this second one. It don't matter which one you pour first. If you want the bottom to remain almost perfectly flat, don't fill it all the way to the rim. I have some molds that's small enough that, that I have to use a funnel. Pour right into this mold. Now, I wanted it to be flat. This one I poured up to the rim and it's kind of rounded, so what you do is just stick a stick in there and bring it out. And that will level down in there just a little bit in your stick. That's all you need. And that, that lets it go back down in there and level out. Now, I'm going to readjust the camera. And I'll put this in a pressure pot. 
and you leave it at least 12 hours, I'll leave it overnight. What I'm gonna do is show you my pressure pot now, and that's nothing but a paint sprayer bucket that I bought at Harbor Freight, and I converted it over as a pressure pot, just particularly for this. And this gets all the bubbles out of your resin without having to heat and all that kind of stuff. Now they'll show you on YouTube, there'll be places where it shows a, a hair dryer, you know, blowing it off and bubbles pop up. But that's not a good method if you're gonna pour into these molds because it won't get all the bubbles out. We'll be right back when I readjust and uh, show you put show me putting this in a pressure pot. Okay, now here's my pressure pot. I'm gonna reach over the table and get each one of these and gently set them right down in there. Of course, you can't squeeze these or the epoxy, the resin will come out. Got that one in there safely. Now we'll take the other one. And I'll place it down in there. Very good. Now the air, we'll put the air in there gently and it will keep, it won't turn them over. The last one's the easy one, it'll go in there like that. I can take my gloves off, I'm done with the epoxy. We'll put a lid on this thing. And it's a pressurized, it will, it will be pressurized. Gently put that on there and make sure we can still turn these up and we can still turn, turn the heads of them without hitting any of this stuff. This is a pressure gauge on top here. Let me move this up just a little. There we go. Pressure gauge right here and I got it set on 48 pounds. 50 pounds is okay, uh, 55 is okay. This pot is red, rated for 70 or 80 pounds. I just stay away from that. I have a relief valve here set at about 60 pounds. So I don't go over 50 pounds on this gauge. So what we do is stagger these as you tighten them. Go across this one, then do the opposite one, then this one a little bit this one and keep doing that till you get them tight and then my income pressure is going right into the side of this regulator right here here i have a shutoff valve coming out of the regulator which drains the air off the pressure off the pot before you open it i'm going to close it and and gently start to open this and you can hear the pressure going in now i got it turned all the way up and the pressure is going to Stop. Yeah, if you have the light, that's about 50 pounds straight up. So we're going to leave it right there overnight. We'll be back in the morning right here at this spot. We'll open this thing up and we'll take the uh, mold off the crystals and take a good look. Well, here we are next day. That went by quick, didn't it? Tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to shut this valve off and shut this, turn this one on you hear the air you just blow the air out it takes the pressure off the pot now we're free to unscrew it lay these back out of the way we'll get our precious little gems right out there now we'll lift this lid up and we start taking them out Looks like they've done just fine. I'll set them over on the table and then we'll go over there and uh, take them out of the mold. See what they look like. Okay, now they're all here on the bench. Let's just see what this egg looks like first. We didn't have anything in it. We just got a plain crystal egg. Generally, I'll lay it down like this and then just pull it out of there, get it started. A nice clear crystal clear egg I don't see any bubbles okay there's one and then I just if you can turn these wrong side out to clean them but we're not gonna do that right now here's a crystal ball sometimes it's hard to get them things 
started, but you can just pop them right out of there. That silicon will stretch and stretch and stretch. And you just basically just roll it right out of there. I'll let them sit around with the inside out. There's another crystal. Anyway, let's take the, let's take the little uh, quartz crystal type thing. This, yeah, that didn't look too bad. Now, these are the skulls. And it's a new mold. I haven't used it before. So I don't know exactly what it'll look like. But I wanted it crystal clear because I'm thinking of putting it on a walking stick right away. Uh, there we have it. And it is definitely, definitely nice. Nice. Now here's a smaller one. And I'll peel it off of there. Okay, crystal clear, very nice. There's the crystal skull that we made. And you see it is, I think it does pretty good. Now you have a flat on the bottom. Well, these were turned upside down in the mold. So that leaves you a flat on the bottom to uh, put it on a pedestal or anything you want to do. Now we'll drill, we'll probably drill a little hole right there uh, just like we mount anything else, and we might put that on a small stick, and um, I don't know. Then here's the same skull, but it's a little bigger. And that thing, there's no bubbles. You can't see probably with this, but it, it's crystal clear, and there's absolutely no, no bubbles at all. So there's the two skulls that we made. Here's the crystal egg, and it's the same same thing. It picks up all kind of reflection in there without, well, I can't see any bubbles at all. There, and the pressure pot is what removes the bubbles. Without the pressure pot, you're gonna have a few bubbles. And then we have the quartz crystal looking thing here, and, uh, that turned out quite nice too. Looks like quartz, looks like real quartz. So that's about it for this video. I'm just wanting to show you using silicon molds, how I make some toppers for my walking sticks. There's a link below to show you various molds that are available and uh, epoxy that I use that's listed also and I uh, can't think of anything else right now but if anything else is used in this video that I don't have a link to or don't quite understand or have a what's that question feel free to ask and if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video